Hi guys, welcome back to PJs. Today I'm going to do an updated video on the carburetor, the KNKS2. And that is due to the many questions, inquiries and comments and interactions that I've had with you on the carburetor on my channel on YouTube and also on the social media. There's been so many questions that I thought I will do an update on this and I decided that I will put in more information and also add some links to other videos which would address specific issues on the carburetor. In this video, I basically just want to point out a few things about this uh, carburetor. This is not a highly technical video, um, it's just a how-to DIY and it's based on my personal experiences with this carburetor. I have on many occasions stripped these carburetors and assembled them again so I basically know how they work and what are the things that commonly go wrong on these carbs. Okay, these carbs were fitted by VW when these cars were manufactured and if you have one of these carbs, like I mentioned, the KS2, the KN KS2, this is the original carb and this is a very good carb. If you have one of these, don't get rid of it by replacing it with a pirate carb. You can rather repair it because you buy a kit which costs you about 100 Rand and you can replace the parts that is needed. And that's how the carb kit looks. You buy it in a little box like this and you get all your little parts and stuff that needs to be fitted into the carb like your jets, your springs and uh, tire frames. You get all those things with the carb kit which you can just replace. So my advice is always never get rid of a good genuine carb like this and replace it with a uh, pirate or aftermarket part. This is a very good carb, never give it away. Now the usual things that go wrong with these carbs is the most common things is the idling jet and your main jet, you know that seems to get clogged up with a um, little bit of debris. So uh, sometime, from time to time you have to open up this carb. I know sometimes you use carburetor to clean up but sometimes it's a good thing to open up this carb if you can. Now many people don't like to mess around with the carb and they'd rather give the job to a specialist. But um, it's not a very difficult job to just remove these bolts and um, open the carb. But then again if you don't want to do that then rather, than it, rather give it to the expert. And um, inside of these carbs you will find there is some dirt and sometimes that clogs up your jets and you have a bit of um, trouble starting and jerking and car won't idle so I would advise you to at some stage try and open your carb because it is necessary to get rid of that dirt. Another, another thing people always um, complain about is that the car doesn't want to idle and then it simply comes down to just this wire here which is an earth wire which runs from the car against the cylinder head and in short that wire is intact because if that thing is not connected your car won't idle. And of course your idle cutoff valve which sits right behind the carburetor. If that is faulty then you will have a case of your engine not idling. So another thing that is also a problem on these carbs is the accelerator pump. It is the pump that actually pumps as you put your foot on the gas pedal inside the car. It actuates this and it pumps gas into the carburetor. But what goes wrong with these things is the actual diaphragm, something like this. It's a little rubber that gets inserted in here and that goes, it sort of um, little tiny holes develop in it and then it doesn't give you that effect um, enough to pump in fuel into your carburetor. So that gives you a problem when you need to start and that is why you will have to throw petal into the mouth of the the carb to make it start but by replacing this thing into that um, accelerator pump will solve that problem. Another common problem on this car is the second stage that doesn't um, go into action and that can be caused by a simple thing like a uh, little rubber hose not being connected properly or it has a, a hole in it or a tear in it or this actual um, component here which also has a diaphragm inside. When I say diaphragm I'm speaking about something like that. It's a rubber um, little thingy and um, inside here is another one and that can also be removed and be replaced because if that is not working correctly then you, your second stage of the carburetor will not kick into action. Another problem that this carb may give is um, flooding. 
where too much fuel flows into the carburetor and it causes the car to run rich or it will cut out. So this over here is underneath here is a bolt, a brass nut, which is where one makes the adjustments for the amount of fuel flowing into the bowl of the carburetor. So that is what needs to come out and then you just use a screwdriver and you make your adjustments there. But I wouldn't advise you just to do it if you don't know how to do it. Rather take it to somebody that is in the know or experienced. But don't mess around with this. You may make your situation worse. And another thing is I don't think I can omit to speak about the, the base plate of the carburetor where the carburetor sits on. We all know it's this part here. That's your carburetor base plate. If that is not sealed up properly or well, there's a T in there, you will have idling issues, performance issues, etc. So my advice is always if you can fit this thing correctly by using a bit of sealer, but it's got to be a petrol and oil resistant sealer. Now for that I would use Victor Ryan's sealer. That is the one sealer that I know that I've had no problems with, with um, it breaking down due to the oil or uh, petrol. So that is a basic overview of this carburetor and I've covered basically most of the important or the most common things that would ever go wrong on this carburetor. But as I said there is a link in the video at the end of the video where you can go to and click on and go to any specific topic on the carburetor.